My guest here in San Francisco is Dr. Urbina, who's heading up a unique type of center of influence in the Central California area. Dr. Urbina, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. Now, what are you doing exactly in your ministry now? You know, I'm the director for Life Hope Center's ministry. It's a humanitarian service that provides practical and relevant services to the community. We provide free dental care, free vision care, and medical screening, along with other health-related uh, sources or resources that the local church has available. Now, in the Office of Adventist Mission, we're very interested in urban centers of influence, but what you are describing is a mobile center of influence. Tell me exactly how it works. You know, one of our focuses, the essence of Life Hope Center's ministry is relationship building. And in order to build relationship, it takes intentionality. When we follow Christ's method, he mingled as one who sought good in others. That's mingling with intentionality. So when we prepare for a Life Hope Center's program, we will meet long before the anticipated date of the program to prepare our church finding their resources, understanding the needs of the community, and serving as a, as, a, as a source of matching need with resources. And so we work with the local churches in preparing them, also to prepare them for the actual day of service. And then most importantly, is really having an evangelistic strategy of relationship building that ultimately leads to introducing them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. During that process, we're actually demonstrating his acts of service, which are demonstrations of what the gospel message is. And so when, when individuals begin to hear it in word, then they begin to reflect and match the actions with the words, and then it makes perfect sense to them. Terrific. Now, I called it a mobile center of influence. What exactly is the, the center that you have traveling around? You know, what we find as a health crisis in our, in our country has become a, an evangelistic opportunity. And so because dental and vision care are much too much needed services that are often elective services in, in people's uh, um, insurance, health insurance portfolio, what we do is that we go to churches and we purposely set up our programs in the local church to help brand the services that we're reaching out to the community with the local church. And so we will, we will set up our mobile clinic as one that we have a 27 foot trailer and it's mobile portable so that the equipment that we have in our trailer we unload and we adapt it to the needs of the available space in the churches. And so we'll set up our dental clinic, we'll set up our vision clinic and our medical screening clinic there. Now you're a pastor, but you in a former life were also a dentist. How do you combine these two together? How did this happen? You know, I practiced dentistry for 37 years and um, God took me through the torturous route of, of uh, uh, learning that profession, but he had other plans unbeknownst to me. And so his call to ministry was one that left me a bit puzzled initially because why would God call me at this point of my life where I practiced dentistry for 37 years and, and to come into ministry. And so when our Central California Conference initiated the program for Life Hope Centers and they called me to help develop the program, it was, it was so exciting to realize that here God had been preparing me all along for combining ministry with the practice of health and dentistry. That's wonderful. Now, you also mentioned there's a, a vision component as well. Who cares for that side of things? You know, we have dedicated volunteers. Um, you know, we have over half a million dollars worth of equipment, but the most important and essential uh, component of our Life Hope Center's ministry are the volunteers. And so we depend uh, very importantly on our volunteers. We have a team of dedicated volunteer optometrists and vision team that join us. Uh, we are also very intentional in terms of incorporating about one-third of our volunteers as non-Adventist. Wonderful. We like to have the opportunity that provides us mixing shoulders at, with, with non-Adventist professionals. We had one instance where we had, we had a program in a local community. We have had served over 300 individuals that day. and At the end of the of the day we had a lounge set up for our volunteers and I was uh, 
you know, uh, eating and, and uh, conversing with two fellow colleagues who I presumed were Adventists until one of them asked me, you know, I'm, I'm just impressed by the, log the logistics of Life Hope Centers. You know, what is it, what is it about uh, this that you're so passionate about? And then his colleague said, well, all I know about Seventh-day Adventists is that it's a cult. Mm. And then he came back and commented, you know, all I've heard about Seventh-day Adventists is what you don't eat. Right. And before I had an opportunity to respond, he came around and, and the other partner, uh, colleague, had commented, what is it about Seventh-day Adventists that you believe? What, what do Adventists believe? And so therein came the opportunity to talk to them about Jesus. And I would venture to say that we'd be hard pressed finding two individuals like this walking into our churches and asking that question. Exactly. And yet it was in this setting that the Spirit of God moved their hearts and opened them to inquire. So not only are you touching the lives of people you're serving, but the people who are serving with you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you're very intentional in, not, intentional in not only caring for the physical needs of people, but also their spiritual needs. Yes, yes. We know that when we follow Christ's method, Christ's method alone is the most successful method for reaching others. And he mingled with a desire to seek those. So it was mingling with intentionality. And he sympathized. You can't sympathize with people without being in the midst of them and understanding their needs. And then he was able to serve and treat them. And as a result of accomplishing that, then he bid them to follow. And so Life Hope Centers is in essence fulfilling that model of Christ's method alone. Fantastic. Dr. Urbina, thank you so much for My sharing pleasure. with us today. You're welcome. And viewers at home, what a marvelous initiative this is. And there may be some variation of this that you can try in your urban communities where you live. But please pray for this tremendous mission challenge here in Central California. You know, we, we understand that through the Bay Area, we have between eight to 10 million people. It's a mission field in itself. Thank you.